All right, YouTube, once again, it's going to be Vernon Stewart here for the podcast, talking Auburn football. Go ahead and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. Man, we're almost at 4,900K subscribers. Go ahead and like the video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn down in the deep south. College football is king, and on the plains of Auburn, the loveliest village, the battle cry is War Eagle. You know, I, I just really don't like what I'm seeing out of the Auburn fan base. Not from a necessarily, uh, you know, a negative standpoint, but it, it's just giving me those 2,000 and 12 vibes, the interest in the program. See, you, you, you're kind of spinning these Auburn fans in so many different directions. Whether you guys care to believe it or not, I actually work in Athens, Georgia. What I'm usually used to is in my establishments, I'm used to seeing Auburn fans. In the Georgia week, I'm, I, I wanted to hit a, a Auburn fan with a war eagle, but man, for the first time in a long time, with me working in the city, I did not see one Auburn fan on game day in Athens, and that was very disheartening. It's very telling of where the the the, the, the temperature check of the Auburn fan base as it relates to football right now. You look in the stands. I mean, there's not many Auburn fans in the stands. Uh, like, they just don't want to be seen. And usually, no matter where Auburn is as a program, the Auburn fans travel well. I did not see a single Auburn jersey. I didn't see a single Auburn car with a flag on it. None of that. So what does that say? I think Auburn has to figure out a way to get the Auburn culture of pride back. It's going to take a lot. But at minimal, it's going to take some wins. I think Auburn has to figure out a way against a Ole Miss team, which, which feels like they're one of the hottest football teams in the SEC West with wins over Kentucky, a recent win over Vanderbilt after coming back from behind winning that game, have to find a way to make this win manageable like they always have. Auburn historically is 35 and 10 over Ole Miss. This is, and, and this, and I used to wonder like, why am not, why am I not really intrigued about this Auburn Mississippi game? Not this year, but just in general, because Auburn and Ole Miss don't really see each other much. Forty-five times in the span of the lifetime of both schools just doesn't bode a lot of meaningfulness. This game actually gained meaningful, gained a lot of meaning. When in 1992, when Ole Miss, well, here's what happened. In 1992, Auburn separated into two sub-conferences, the West and the East. Ole Miss in the SEC West and Auburn in the SEC West. So that means they have to play each other every year. And... That brought some type of significance. And the thing is, the significance of this game is usually when Ole Miss is able to beat Auburn, that means there's about to be a coaching change at Auburn. Ole Miss has never been a team that Auburn has ever been intimidated by. Um, Auburn has ever been, you know, really intrigued by. That's usually a game that, you know, you play Ole Miss right before you play, say, a uh, you know, uh, hell, I don't know, Arkansas or some, you know, 
somebody Texas at well now Texas A and M, and the Auburn fans now are at a loss. I got some folks even on my channel that are talking about the prospect of Ole Miss beating Auburn bad. I mean, I'm talking about real bad. Now, how can Auburn keep this from happening? Number one, Auburn has the personnel to make this a pretty good football game like all the others. What Auburn definitely has to do, we better hope that the offensive line has studied some film and stopped missing blocks. I mean, the missed blocks are absolutely terrible. Two, Robbie Ashford has to be more emotionally stable and more situational with how he plays the game. You can't just hold the ball out there and expect these guys not to knock the ball out of your hand. Vault Hemingway Stadium is a very tough place to play, even at 12 o'clock in the morning, and especially a team that probably wants to beat Auburn, especially Lane Kiffin, who's probably, you know, smelling blood from his time at Alabama, wants to beat Auburn worse than you can ever know. I'll tell you what. I hope the Auburn Tigers can figure it out. Another thing is this. Can the offensive line get some type of push to get some type of running game going out? As it turns out, you wouldn't believe it. Ole Miss of all teams actually has one of the better run defenses in the country right now. They're doing pretty good at, at stopping the run. So if Auburn can't run the ball, you put the pressure on Robbie Ashford, then you could be looking at another situation where Auburn absolutely struggles on the road against another Power 5 team. And if you look at all the Power 5 teams that are of relevance, that are of rank, Auburn has absolutely struggled. You talk about a 40 point to 12 game against Penn State. Georgia, we kind of knew, you know, we knew Georgia would win. We didn't think that Georgia would win to such a surmountable uh, margin. But Ole Miss feels like they are that team right now. And the Auburn fans are just at a loss. They don't know if they're going to have this coach next year. They don't know who the head coach is going to be. They don't know if the head coach is fired, who's going to be the interim. It's just so many unknowns with the Auburn fan base to where they have reached a point of indifference. That I'm not that I'm personally not comfortable with. Let me know what you think about this video. Go ahead and like the video, comment and subscribe. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger. War. Damn. Eagle.